us fulfil our own dreams to help other people fulfil theirs. I'd love to have my own restaurant, a West Indian restaurant somewhere in South London. You can be successful, you can balance both social and financial, and, and that's the way forward. basically opened the recording studio that's there for the community so we help people build their dreams basically and they come in and they can record vocal recording, band recording, we do um, track production. When we started up we didn't know what a social enterprise was at all. Um, we found out when we was writing our business plan for the Prince's Trust that we could become a social enterprise and it seemed really good because we didn't want to be a charity. It's basically a business that makes money, but the money that it makes runs back into the business, so it's all not for profit. The profit that you make gets put back into the business in order to better that service. Jess and myself want to be producing well-known acts and stuff like that and have a franchise of these recording studios that can help other young people. Blue Ventures is a conservation and development organisation based here in London and committed to the conservation of threatened marine and coastal environments around the world. Working with um, a friend of mine who was a business graduate, we developed a, a company that enabled us to indulge our, our mutual passion which was marine ecology and diving and, uh, and also try to make a bit of money for, for a good cause. People come from all over the world to take part in our ecotourism projects in, uh, in Madagascar particularly and that generates uh, quite a lot of revenue and all of the, the profits that are raised are reinvested in the charitable arm of, of the company. The most rewarding experiences I've had so far have been seeing the, the benefits of our work reflected in, in local communities and seeing people appreciate either the fisheries benefits or the environmental benefits of our, of our work and that's hugely encouraging and, and inspiring and it, and it drives you to do more. I started at 15 as a trainee and I, I graduated with merit after 18 months. When I started at the kitchen, it was really hard work and I, I, was, ready to, I was ready to leave. It's really hard and I wasn't enjoying it. But then I started doing pasta and I just fell in love with pasta and I started just enjoying work, coming to work, making pasta and I just loved it. I think a lot of businesses can learn from what 15 is doing and other social enterprises because it's just giving people that respect in the beginning. Like, even though a lot of us have done stupid things with our lives and, you know what I mean? and a lot of people are wary of us because of where we've come from and what we've done, they still trust us and respect us at the beginning and that means a lot. When you've grown up and nobody really trusts you and you get people crossing the road to the other side when they see you walking past and then you come into it and it's everybody wants to help you and it's really uplifting and it builds a lot of self-confidence. We were doing a geography lesson all about um, less developed countries and particularly focusing on Ghana and it raised the water issue. Ghana just don't have water or anything like that and they don't get the education that they need because they're spending so much time trying to go like miles and miles to get water which is still even dirty. And a hand went up and a pupil said could we raise £1,200 and have a well in a village in Ghana? One person said why don't we sell water in school and use the profits from that to send to water aid for our well in Ghana. We buy the water off Abbey Well for about 30 pence a bottle. Um, about a thousand bottles at a time, I think it is. We decided to charge 50 pence each for the bottles, although it went up to 70 pence, and if you brought your bottle back, you got your 20 pence for the recycling purposes. 
what you're actually doing is you're running a business, you're advertising it, you are working out rotors and you know you're staffing that business, you're doing everything that a big business does but what you're doing is you're not giving vast sums of money to yourselves or to your shareholders, what you're doing is you're ploughing that money back into someone who really needs that. What's great working at Cafe Direct is that actually no one has to lose out, everyone wins and, and when you explain to your friends or people you meet that they can buy quality tea and coffee and get what they want out but also at the same time know that they're giving back um, money um, to the growers. So we're paying back a fair price, but we're also reinvesting over 60% of our profits back to the growers. It's empowering the growers in, in, in these 12 countries who work throughout the world to gain skills, become empowered, but also at the same time produce better quality coffee and tea. So it's that win-win situation and I think that's what's exciting about what we do. We also are the sixth largest coffee brand and the eighth largest tea brand. So we've been able to kind of get into the mainstream and help grow the fair trade market. And I think that we'd like to see more people, more people do that.